Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to unlock your bootloader for your Xperia smartphone and how to install a custom kernel and a firmware. So, as you can see, I've got a nice Xperia Z2 with the latest Android update. Everything is working fine. Everything is pretty snappy. But there is one big drawback with the latest version of Android for this for this device. And that is the better life. Sony made a huge mistake with with this firmware, and I don't really know why they did this. They simply removed stamina mode. When I try to search for it in the options, the only thing I find is a brief description about it. There is no way to turn it on. On this in, on this firmware. Sony phone batteries are one of the most outstanding ones, but with this Marshmallow update, my phone became a casual Android phone. So I decided to step up and install a better firmware to my phone. First of all, we need to check our device is unlockable or not. By typing these numbers to the dialer, we can bring up a service menu. And there, just tap on the service info, then configuration, and here you can verify that your device is unlockable. The next step to unlock your phone is to go to this website. I will leave the link in the description. Just simply select the model of your phone and continue to the next page. Then it will ask for an email address. In the email you will receive a link that you need to proceed. Now you need to find the device IMEI, IDID or MEID number. The easiest way to find it is by typing these numbers to the dialer. Check the following boxes to accept the terms and submit. For the next step, you need to download and install Android Studio. To install it you also need Java. So just proceed to Java's website and download it.
After you have successfully installed Android Studio, you need to download an updated fastboot driver. Note that you only need it that if you are on Windows system. Now run Android Studio and let's go to the SDK manager to install the latest release of Google USB driver. After that, let's search for the extracted SDK folder, usually you can find it here. And here you need to copy the downloaded updated fastboot driver to the extras, Google and USB driver. Now you need to make yourself a developer on your phone to enable USB debugging. You can do this by tapping multiple times on your phone's build number in the options menu under about phone. After that, just turn off the phone, plug a USB cable to the PC and connect the phone in fastboot mode by holding the volume up button. Now just watch for a second. You need to install the USB driver by entering the device manager on your PC. But as you can see our lovely Windows 10 is pretty defensive. So we need to get through its defense. Don't worry, you are not going to destroy it. Well, at least if you don't install anything else than I show here. So, search for recovery options in the start menu and restart your PC in advanced mode. Here click on troubleshoot, advanced options, startup settings and restart. Press number 7 to disable the driver signature enforcement. Now you are able to install the USB driver. Find your device and click on update driver software options. Browse your PC to find the driver itself and select the USB driver folder. You will find it here. Now go to this location and open a common prompt window by holding down shift 
and right click in the folder in the command prompt window type fastboot then fastboot devices and after that just simply copy the text from the website warning this is the last step before unlocking your bootloader if you proceed you may void your warranty and that's it you have successfully unlocked your bootloader Now that we managed to unlock the bootloader, we can install a custom kernel and a firmware. First, find your most preferred firmware that you want to install on your device. There are plenty on the XDA forum. I will leave a link in the description which firmware I choose to go with. After you have downloaded the firmware, you need to copy it to your phone. Don't extract it, just simply copy the zip file to your phone's internal memory. Before we can install the firmware, we need to install a custom kernel. And for that, we need a program called Flash 2. Links are in the description. Download and install it. Then go to the Flash Tool installation folder, Drivers, and install the Fastboot and Flash Mode driver. Again, the Windows 10 would block this installation because, because it thinks that is harmful for your PC. But we already disabled the driver check, so we don't need to restart the process. Note, after you will restart your PC, everything will go back to default settings. Now you need to power off your phone and connect it via fastboot mode as we did earlier. It will pop up in Flash Tool. Now go to this web page. Again, links are in the description. And download your desired kernel for your device. I went with experimental kernel version 3. After kernel downloaded, extract it and go to flash tool and flash it to your phone by clicking on the flash icon, selecting fastboot mode, then select kernel to flash. Now unplug your phone and boot it up. Press your volume up button multiple times until you end up in the recovery mode. Here 
you need to wipe your form. Select Dalvik System Data and Cache and swipe to wipe. After that, you can install the new firmware on your form. Just go to install and select your firmware that you copied to your phone internal memory. Then swipe to install. Now take your time, it will take a while. Even the first boot will take more than 5 or 10 minutes. But after that, you can enjoy your fresh installed device. Yay, stamina mode. Welcome back. 